Over the past 75 years since its gun fell silent, the Panzerkampf Wagon 5, more commonly referred to as the Panther Tank, has been subject to vigorous debates surrounding its level of success. While some have hailed it as the forerunner of modern battle tanks, and even consider it the finest tank of World War II, others have criticized it, as yet another misallocation of precious German army resources, and an example of their defeat. It is highly unlikely that the narrative presented here, will settle the dispute once and for all. Rather, it aims to provide a relevant assessment of the Panther tank's capabilities. The Panther tank is very much seen as Germany's response to the Soviet T-34, and was intended to replace the Panzer III and Panzer IV. It boasted a formidable gun, impressive speed, and commendable armor. The 75mm KWK-42 high-velocity gun on the Panther, showcased remarkable accuracy with its flat trajectory, effective up to 2,000 meters. The gun demonstrated exceptional armor penetration, surpassing even the renowned 88mm gun of the Tiger I, especially at medium ranges. This impressive firepower enabled it to penetrate the armor of most Allied tanks, from substantial distances. Additionally, it featured extraordinary sights, with the gunner's sight being noted for its clarity and ease of use. In later versions, Panthers were equipped with up to a 5x zoom capability, further enhancing their precision on the battlefield. The Panther tank incorporated a well-designed sloped frontal armor, inspired by the T-34, but with nearly double the thickness. With its 82 to 85 mm armor sloped at 55 degrees, the Panther boasted an effective thickness ranging between 143 and 148 mm, offering superior protection compared to the Tiger I, which had 100 to 110 mm armor, at 0 to 10 degrees. As a result, achieving frontal penetration against the Panther tank would require most Allied guns to be within approximately 600 meters or closer. Moreover, the sloped armor of the Panther increased the likelihood of deflections, further adding to the challenge of successfully penetrating its frontal defenses. The Panther tank featured wide tracks, and utilized the same engine as the considerably heavier Tiger, resulting in excellent mobility. One remarkable fact about the Panther tank is its impressively low production cost, which amounted to roughly half the expense of a Tiger I, and only slightly higher than that of a Panzer III or Panzer IV. This cost efficiency played a significant role in its mass production, resulting in over 6,000 Panthers being built. Such a substantial number was particularly noteworthy, given the challenging circumstances faced by the German industry, which constantly grappled with the relentless onslaught of massive Allied airstrikes. However, despite the widespread acclaim bestowed upon this tank, there exist compelling arguments suggesting that it fell short of its potential greatness. Due to rushed production, the Panther tank entered service without undergoing adequate testing, leading to numerous mechanical failures during its initial days of deployment. Despite being designed in early 1942, production of the Panther began as early as September of the same year, a feat that would be extremely challenging to achieve in modern times. Merely a few months after the prototype had been tested, the Panther tank swiftly transitioned into full-scale production, emphasizing the pressing need felt by the German forces for its deployment. The Battle of Kursk stands out as a notable instance, where such mechanical shortcomings were evident. The Synchromesh gearbox on the Panther tank was deemed somewhat over-engineered, 
but it was the engine-related problems that posed significant challenges for the vehicle. During the autumn and winter of 1943, the Panther's combat readiness was notably low, with a significant portion, approximately 50%, of the tanks rendered inoperative. Out of these, around two-thirds experienced engine-related difficulties. The engine fires were a result of the rush design and production process. While most of the design flaws were addressed by late 1943 and early 1944, their resolution came too late to have a significant impact on the outcome of the war. Additionally, the final drive proved to be a major source of trouble for the Panther, as it struggled to withstand the strains imposed by a tank that ended up being around 30% heavier than its initial design specifications. Another drawback of the Panther tank was with its interleaved wheel system. While these wheels provided excellent mobility and traversing capabilities over rough terrain, they posed a considerable maintenance challenge. Accessing one wheel necessitated the removal of another, and the process would repeat, resulting in a laborious and time-consuming maintenance procedure. The large KWK-42 main gun on the Panther tank was highly effective and accurate as an anti-tank weapon. However, it posed challenges in street fighting scenarios and difficult terrain, where its size and maneuverability were compromised. Regrettably, the Panther tank's gunner lacked a periscope, leaving them solely reliant on the limited field of view provided by the coaxial gun sight. Even more problematic, the commander did not possess a turret override, necessitating instructions to be given to the gunner for turret rotation and target acquisition once the bearing was correctly set. While the turret traverse of the Panther tank was known for its precision, it suffered from being notably slow and weak. Due to the lengthy barrel of the 75mm gun, there were instances where the turret struggled to rotate when faced with a tank positioned on a significant incline. The side armor of the Panther tank was relatively thin, with the upper hull measuring 40 mm at a 40 degree angle, equivalent to 52.2 mm line of sight thickness in early models, and 50 mm at a 30 degree angle, equivalent to 57.7 mm line of sight thickness in Model G. Furthermore, the Panther's ammunition was stored in the side sponsons, which meant that a side hit had a higher likelihood of igniting the tank. This vulnerability reduced the advantage provided by the heavy front armor and the superior firepower, particularly in close-range engagements. The 4 mm of hull armor behind the road wheels was vulnerable to penetration from anti-tank rifles that bypassed the road wheels, let alone tank guns. To address this issue, the Germans introduced skirts known as Schürzen, which served as spaced armor for the thinner hull. This practice continued throughout the war and has persisted to this day, with the skirts providing additional protection to the vulnerable side armor. Additionally, the Panther's significant weight rendered certain bridges inaccessible, limiting its mobility in certain situations. The Panther tank was primarily designed for engaging in long-range tank battles on open terrains, such as the Russian steppes. It proved to be exceptionally lethal in such environments. However, its slow rate of fire, sluggish target acquisition, poor turret turn rate, and thin side armor, made it highly vulnerable in the close quarters combat that characterized the battlefields of Western Europe. However, once its issues were resolved, the Panther emerged as a truly formidable adversary for both the Allied forces and the Soviet Union, instilling a sense of terror, comparable to the feared Tiger I. The final version of the Panther, Model G, successfully addressed many of the issues faced by its predecessors, and emerged as arguably the finest and most formidable medium tank of the war. 
But, with a production count of only around 6,000 units, the Panther's arrival proved to be a case of almost too little, too late, to significantly alter the course of the war for Germany. The final Panthers encountered by the Americans proved to be highly lethal, yet their armor suffered from brittleness and a tendency to crack due to the absence of alloys. Despite these limitations, they inflicted a significant toll well beyond what their numbers would suggest, leaving a lasting impact on the future design of main battle tanks worldwide. The Panthers, on the other hand, suffered from numerous flaws in their early stages, and were burdened with design compromises towards the end, which ultimately hindered its potential for greater success. <laughs>